Hey guys, welcome to another one of my techniques videos. Today I just wanted to go over a couple of different things or a couple of different ways of actually sharpening your, your image. Uh, I know there's um, nearly hundreds of ways of doing it and I know that everybody does it slightly differently. So just thought I'd share a couple of different ways that, that I go over, go over it with mine. Um, and usually with sharpening, I usually leave it to the well, global sharpening. So like the whole image I usually leave right to the very end. So I've done all my retouching up until this point, and then I'm just working on the actual flattened image. So most of the time, and what I'm sure all of us have done for a long, long time, is just used unsharp mask. Um, nothing, nothing too, too tricky about this. It's just usually set to 100 with the radius, um, and that gives like a, like an even overall sharpen of the of the entire image. Now you probably can't see any difference on the on the actual video here, but when you try it yourselves, yeah, it's, it's pretty plain to see that you know some of the highlights and that sort of thing really really stand out. It's it's completely global though. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't target any specific areas, so it sharpens the the background, the you know the, the hair. The skin all sharpens it exactly the same amount regardless of how much you add or that sort of thing now you know adjusting the radius will obviously affect it in a pretty horrendous way with skin and that sort of thing so i normally just leave mine at around one um, so that's that's the unsharp mask that we normally always use and then the newest one that i hadn't really seen or, or heard of until somebody mentioned it to me um, was actually the smart sharpen that's that's in photoshop now i don't know which version it was introduced but it is um, relatively recent and smart sharpen is one that it does does basically that it sort of looks at which areas probably need sharpening more, more than others so when it's when it, it it manages to work out skin and doesn't sharpen it as much as like hair and eyes and that sort of thing. Um, you got the just the, the basic and the, exactly the same before. You know we can give it the, the hundred that we had before in unsharp mask. Um, but when you do it yourselves, you'll notice that things like features like the hair and um, tiny sort of droplets or highlights and that sort of thing will appear to be sharpened more than larger areas of a flat skin, if you like. Okay, so you'll be able to see that. Um, a couple of new new things on here. You can have the advanced, which will go into the actual um, shadow details and that sort of thing. So you could probably uh, sharpen less in the in the shadows and maybe have more sharpening on the on the highlights and that sort of thing. Um, but to be fair, I, I haven't really played with that. You've also got uh, this one down here, which is uh, removing of certain certain blurs. So I think Gaussian blur. If you remove Gaussian blur, you're looking at maybe if you, if you had a scanned image or something like that, then you could do it. Um, and then lens blur, is probably just leave it on lens blur. blur. So that will get rid of a, an actual photographic blur um, if there was one, but hopefully you shouldn't shouldn't have one. So that's Smart Sharpen. So that's the um, short, and, short and quick version. Uh, just before we go any deeper, I'll just go over what actually happens with with sharpening, what, what it actually means. Um, and how, how sharpening actually works. Sharpening basically is making or increasing the contrast between uh, adjoining pixels. So let me just let me just show you if I just I'm just going to create a new layer here a second, um, and I'm just going to create. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, grey would be fine. Uh, I'm just going to fill that with grey, um, and then add some more grey in there. different tone slightly darker and then slightly darker again okay perfect okay now when I sharpen this you should be able to see what I mean when I say about the fact that it's actually changing the contrast between adjoining pixels um, so if we go back into Unsharp Mask, so you can start to see, so the darker colors, it, it actually increases the contrast, so it makes them darker around the actual edges there, and on the lighter colors, it actually makes them brighter, okay? So um, it gives the, gives the illusion of it being sharper. So even though, see on, on here, 
we got the actual neutral gray, so it's the the mid-tone in between the light gray and the dark gray. When it's butting up against a lighter color, it's actually darkening its edge. When it's butting up against a darker color, it's actually lighting the, its edge. Okay, but that's all these sharpening things are doing. Now, it shouldn't really, you don't necessarily need to know that, but one thing that it can help with is, um, you've got to bear in mind I'm working with grays here, so you don't really see any difference, but imagine if you were sharpening or heavily sharpening something with a lot of color in it, um, when you increase the contrast with something with color, you actually increase the saturation. Um, so you need to be aware of that. Uh, it may help, so just let me show you what I mean again, if we just, let's just colorize these. Um, so we can sort of see what I mean. So now we've got the color ones, and now we want to sharpen it. Um, if we go in there and do exactly the same thing, sharpen these. Um, now what's actually what's actually happening now is the fact that when we sharpen them, it's increasing the contrast between the mid-tones and the, and the lights and that sort of thing. But you see, in here, now what we've got is, is we've actually got something where it's actually increased the saturation down here. Okay, so it's no longer the original color that we had before. Um, does that make a huge difference? Well, can do. It really depends on the sort of level of um, retouching and that sort of thing, where you want to go. And especially if you wanted to get into an area where you really wanted to push something, um, like, or like really, really sort of use it to, to your advantage to bring out specular highlights or something like that, then you probably need to be aware that it's going to increase the saturation. So one way around that is um, we can actually can actually increase the sharpness of an image using, um, rather than Smart Sharpen or Unsharp Mask or anything like that, is, is to actually use something called called High Pass, um, which we can, which I'll go over in just a second. Just before I leave uh, this image, just delete that. Let's just sharpen. There's one thing that um, I've used quite a bit that I know that um, some people aren't aware of is to come in, sharpen an image. Um, okay, that. If you think, you know, you look at it and go, oh, it is, I have gone too much, then you can go into um, edit at the top here and then fade or shift command F. Okay. And fade basically just reduces the, the overall impact of the last thing that you did. So if it was curves or um, hue saturation, anything like that, it will, it will reduce it by a, a percentage. Now, if you'd done that on a separate layer, you wouldn't need to go back into that, but I just thought I'd share that little, that little thing with you. So the other ones that lots of people use is uh, high pass sharpening. I'm sure you've all heard of people using that. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a couple of different ways that, that I do it, and I probably do it in a couple of different stages as well. Um, so I'm just gonna duplicate the layer uh, there, Command J, and what I'm gonna do is, because we mentioned before about uh, when we sharpen something, it introduces saturation to an image. I don't necessarily want to do that. I just want to sharpen the image itself. I don't want to add any saturation. So I'm just going to uh, desaturate this. So Command Shift U, um, completely desaturate that. And then this first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And uh, yeah, this this first copy I'm going to do is going to be uh, probably quite similar to. An unsharp mask, so it's going to be like a global version, so somewhere around five or something like that. Um, it's just going to sharpen really small lines, and you can see here, see where it's doing what, like, like I showed you before about it's increasing the contrast around the edges. Okay, so that's that's what it's doing. It's increasing the contrast, giving it the illusion of being of being sharper. Um, so now I'm going to go into the uh, layer mode and I'm just going to change these down here. So this is linear light, vivid light, going all the way up to soft light and overlay. Um, linear light is probably the most aggressive one, okay, as you can see there. Um, so you can start there and then probably just bring the opacity right down maybe to around 30%, something like that is usually, is usually a good place to start. Um, you can turn that on and off. You might not be able to see that on, on the video, but yeah. Um, yeah, 
so that will give you that global sharpening effect as well um, so you could if you wanted you could now duplicate that uh, which is obviously going to make it quite quite aggressive but you can just up the opacity on that one and then just apply a mask on that so go down to the bottom palette there and just click on the mask and then when you click that just press command I and that will invert the mask okay uh, so now I really just want to bring out a couple of different features so I'm just going to choose a brush just a, just a soft brush is fine um, and set to 30% opacity out there and I'm just going to paint on to some of the features that I want by some of the bits that are, that are already in focus um, and some of the specular highlights there okay um, so that again will will help to lead the eye into the image okay so just by just by adding adding those little extra bits there will really help that uh, and then finally I just wanted to add this is personal preference and you some people prefer to do dodge and burn layer anyway but this one is a um, quick and ugly way of doing a dodge and burn is to go back to my original image here and just duplicate that um, again desaturate I'm just gonna turn these off desaturate that okay and now we're going to go back into filter other high pass and I'm just going to up it quite a lot maybe to around 60 something like that okay um, so again you can see how it's increasing the contrast uh, so between the dark and the light it's got this white edge all the way around it um, that because it's like I said it's just increasing the contrast between those two tones uh, so now we can go in and we probably you know linear light is just going to be ridiculous you know we can keep going all the way up but you were probably looking at around soft light something like that is going to be the, the the softest of all the tones okay um, now you can see when I've got it at full opacity here we are using that contrast between the tones to our advantage now it's 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 increasing the, the darkness of the shadows and increasing the brightness of some of the highlights okay so that will give it the effect of a quick and dirty um, dodge and burn layer and then you probably just want to reduce that again um, this one again purely down to personal preference and whether you've done it already before as well I think I've already dodged and burned this one this image up until this point anyway so I probably don't want to do it too much so probably around 30 percent is fine all right guys so that's a quick overview of uh, how we can adjust the sharpness of an image um, some of those things like some of the specific local sharpening you could do um, as you're as you're going through the image but usually I just tend to leave it right until the end um, so yeah there we go okay guys well thanks so much indeed for watching I hope it was useful by all means you can check out my website at jkixphotography.com or my facebook page um, if you want to see any more tutorials and techniques but yeah have a good one